Greetings! Today I've got a carbon monoxide detector to rip apart. I know, boring, but bear with me. This has got a fuel cell inside and I'm curious to see how it works and what's inside the fuel cell. So we'll take it apart, then we'll rip apart the fuel cell to see what sort of uh, things are happening um, within within the cell. It's a Kidi uh, model number 900-0146 and it's the fairly advanced, I guess, the carbon monoxide detector. Um, it, it will show you on the display uh, parts per million of carbon monoxide uh, and or low battery or error and this one is faulty and it reached its life limit probably and it's showing error state which means it's no longer operational. Now there isn't anything else much special on the outside interesting thing is on the battery cover they've got those flaps over here and this is meant to prevent you from closing actually the battery cover without installing the batteries it is possible to do that still but like so but uh, yeah it's it's a preventive measure you're supposed to put the batteries in otherwise it's supposed to be open so you can see there is no batteries in so we can put them put them in you get the idea now I have already taken this slightly apart so this will come come apart quite easily I did that uh, before because uh, before I set up the camera I was worried that the whole thing will be potted inside we won't be able to see anything and it kind of is potted but it's potted in um, what I can probably describe as wax um, so it's like the old electronics um, pretty much everything inside was covered in wax or wax all the coils and um, I don't know what that stuff is but yeah it resembles wax sort of uh, it's soft it comes off and on the outside we've got some chip with uh, which probably is a micro interestingly there is a daughter board over here with um, some more surface mount stuff so let's Let's maybe rip this off and see, see what's inside. Um, here we've got a nice uh, three, seven segment LCD display. I'm wondering if this has got, uh, if this is working on some sort of known interface, whether I could use that with an Arduino or something. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have a look. It's, it's got six wires. 6 pins, VCC, busy, CS clock and data ground. I'll look it up later on, maybe I can get that to work. Here we have another module, it says Kiri on there. So it's clearly a bespoke stuff, it's all covered in this wax thing. Yeah, it probably does all the sensing, detecting and all that uh, all that business. I gave it a quick shot to see if I can peel off the label and read off uh, what's on here, but uh, yeah, I think I've uh, taken the markings on the chip uh, off with the label, so not much doing. There is a crystal, so it's probably some sort of micro with, uh, yeah, program some little loop running and driving the buzzer. This buzzer, by the way, is ridiculously loud, so um, this can be kept for something, to make something annoying. Uh, but, yeah, the interesting bit is here, and this is the carbon monoxide detector. And this is a elect so what's called an electrochemical carbon mo monoxide detector, and basically it's a, it's a fuel cell. So it will, co in, in clean air, nothing happens within uh, now this is going on to grounds of chemistry which I have got very little uh, understanding and knowledge of but the best I could uh, figure out from what I found out on the internet there is um, two electrodes in there and an electrolyte uh, most commonly according to Wikipedia most commonly used is just sulfuric acid like in a car battery and in the presence of carbon monoxide, this should start producing electricity at the expense of consuming the CO, which is carbon monoxide, and using the moisture from the air, H2O, with oxygen as well. And it makes CO2 
and free electrons and hydrogen protons going the other way and it kind of makes the electricity go it's not a huge current but it's enough to you know plug it into some sort of op amp or, or whatnot and and uh, detect and those are quite accurate and have got very long lifespan so yeah let's uh, let's take it apart so I'm going to begin by slicing off the yellow thing yellow plastic on the outside and we've got a packet of what seems like a Vita pack moisture absorber so yeah so this is just a silica gel uh, gel um, this is just a moisture absorbent and here we have an electrode this plastic can pop out and you can see over here or maybe you cannot let me try to now you can you see there's a tiny pinhole this very tiny pinhole this is the only thing that lets the air in from the outside and apparently gases will spread out very rapidly across the whole volume available to them so if there is any carbon monoxide it will spread out very quickly and you will even get to the tiny uh, tiny sensor so yes uh, right now I've got a sealed container so this will require quite a bit of force to get in so let me see what I can use to get it open right so I gave it a shot with this and as soon as I squeezed it I got this liquid substance leaking out which I don't fancy getting on my hands or anywhere else so yeah what do I do now okay I'm going to attempt to clean up this pill with just some toilet tissue I'm not sure of the concentration of the sulfuric acid in here if that's what it is and as I said chemistry is not my thing so I'm not sure immediately on uh, what to use to test maybe the concentration of it but okay better to be safe okay let's uh... oh, hold on there's more coming out it's definitely acid because I, it gives us the, that funny smell out right so let's grab some more paper right I can feel that there is a lot of liquid inside sloshing about um, so I'm suspecting uh, that I'll need a bigger container just to dump all the acid out of it. So be right back Okay, I've got a miscellaneous glass container over here So just in case I should be able to dump everything out of it Here we have the metal membrane and that's where one of the electrodes was connected and As you can see there is this really tiny Pinhole through it See that? Oops, off the camera. There you go. So you can see there is a really, really small hole. And over here, ripping this further apart, there is a plastic cover and a rubber, rubber thing, which also appears to have a little pinhole right in the middle of it. So let's try to take it stage by stage trying not to slosh anything about okay that came off this 
Okay, this is not usual, this is a bit special. There we go, we've got black things which look like rubber, but they are clearly not, they don't behave like rubber. Those are some sort of membrane that will let through uh, carbon monoxide probably and uh, not the acid from the inside to leak out. Okay, and underneath we've got two holes. So let's see, is any of the stuff going to leak out yet? No, it doesn't seem so. I just hope this is not going to end up with a trip to hospital. With me having my face full of acid. At the end of the day, it's curiosity that killed the cat. Okay, I just want to give my hands uh, a wash because I've started feeling a, a strange burning sensation. I'm not sure whether that's my imagination playing tricks or whether I got some of it on, on one of my fingers. Okay, we're getting somewhere. So I've managed to peel off a piece like so. So now I should be able to pry this out. And maybe empty this out. Uh, not necessarily, but I can... There we go, we've got things dropping out of it finally, so let's let it do its thing. Yeah, there's actually quite a bit of it. Uh, when I read online that uh, there is sulfuric acid inside, I, I thought that might be perhaps just like a little, you know, a piece of cloth of something that is slightly soaked in it, not that there is it's actually a substantial amount. To say the least, this is a little bit disappointing. So, this whole thing is, is empty. Um, it's just basically a container full of acid. And yeah, so the whole magic is happening somewhere between this plate and those things so that's all that's inside so let's try to work out what's what okay I have investigated and what I found out that the two metal discs that were sitting on the top of the can quite thick and both of them have got this letter K marking on them that's this one and the one and the other one that was isolated so this one that was isolated had uh, this was that's one of makes one of the electrodes and um, I think that this one must be the other one both are very slightly ferrous so not nowhere near a steel, but uh, yeah, they will gently. You see, actually, hold on, is it? No, it's not the battery tub. So, yeah, very, very slightly magnetic. Um, and uh, looking online, I found this. So here is um, an example of a filter like this, or filter, uh, a sensor. And the way it works basically, there is a, um, a barrier thing, which is basically one of those. Uh, one of those lets through only, only the gas itself. It stops any moisture or 
um, or whatnot, anything else going through. And then we've got a carbon film, which I think is this charcoal um, filter and a sensing electrode, and then the electrolyte that was uh, sitting in the can. Yeah, I was uh, hoping for a slightly different setup with like maybe a, I don't know, some more contraption happening, but it seems it's very simple. I'm just not sure what sort of metal this is. It's it's not steel, it's not aluminium. The can itself is not ferrous at all. I've, possibly that's, that's just plain old uh, stainless steel. But... Uh, I'm not sure if stainless steel would hold sulfuric acid um, so I don't know someone with uh, a little bit more chemics, uh, chemistry knowledge could possibly tell us here is another one of those membranes so what we've got essentially three membranes like so uh, those two discs the outer casing is either this or the outer casing of this that forms the other electrode um, anyways those are electrically connected so it shouldn't uh, shouldn't make a difference and this one here was the other one and yeah somehow it's it works apparently um, so yeah let's uh, tidy this up I think that's it um, here is the acid and I've put a piece of wood in there to see if it will um, cause uh, immediate destruction but it uh, it seems that it's not uh, not dissolving everything straight away so I've just tidied everything up and uh, cleaned the surface and I've cleaned those two discs so uh, and that's the only thing I'm, I've got, I'm left with. Uh, little two metal discs, that I'm not sure what those are. So if you know what those are and what this mysterious K marking is, uh, please feel invited to leave me a comment on what those could be. I'm just curious, that's all. Um, as far as this video, I think that's it, so thank you very much for watching, please remember to give me a like and subscribe for more random stuff, and for the time being, take care.